Well, what we've been doing for about half an hour teaching on the Sunday evenings is uh, we've been doing going into the red, just go to the red in the Bible. Um, I see they've been removed, but we'll get some next week. Um, I'm not gonna do a whole lot in the Beatitudes, but I will pick two or three so you can see, but we had some sheets and we'll get them back uh, next week that will help you understand because Beatitudes are beautiful, but often people don't kind of see it because I'm gonna give you, this will help you out a lot. You're not blessed because people persecute you. Well, I thought you're blessed because people persecute you. No, 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 read it. I said they persecute you for righteousness sake. You're, <laughs> you, and see, it's the righteousness sake, righteousness sake that gets you blessed. In other words, people that persecute you can't stop your blessing, right? If you're doing what's right. However, if you are doing what's right, get ready, you will be persecuted, but you're still blessed. And so see, it's so easy to get focused on the nasty things. I'm glad I'm not on Twitter. It seems it must be very nasty out there. And um, so... You know, people are saying nasty things. None of us likes nasty things. And so he, there's all these things in the scripture, you know, uh, the, you know, the meek shall, blessed are the meek for they'll you know, inherit the earth. Well, I'll tell you how they'll inherit. Meek means humble. It, it said Moses was the most humble man. He started as an arrogant king, which I don't blame him. If you're raised as a king in a king's palace where everybody says, yes, sir, no, sir, from a baby, come on. He didn't know he had been floating around in a little boat. He didn't know his mother's story. All he knew from a baby, he'd been raised in a palace. And then he found out that he was a Hebrew. And then in his arrogance, he killed somebody. See, and then he had to run and then it looked like it was over. You might leave here, go down the road, see a burning bush. What he did, he's, he waited to see how long it burnt for because in the desert, bushes burn all the time. They get so, it gets so hot, they combust. The Bible says, he kept looking at a bush. I imagine he was walking along, saw it, walking along, saw it, walking along, saw it, and it wouldn't quit burning. That means that's Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. And so he thought, well, then I should go over there and see this thing. Because it's kind of amazing that this bush is not disappearing. If you think a burning bush is interesting, wait till the burning bush starts talking to you. <laughs> when you're 80, come on. <laughs> when you've just about said it's over, he thought it was over. Hello? He'd got the teenagers raised. Hello? Yeah. And next thing, God's given him three million teenagers. Come on. Yeah. See? So if you are meek, then what happens is you're teachable. If you're teachable, you won't just read Proverbs, you'll try to activate two verses. The Bible says, just got nothing to do, go, go watch the ant. He'll teach you how to build things. He'll teach you how to make money. The ant will teach you how to make money. But if we just read it, oh, that's a nice verse. But see, a meek person will go and they'll read and all of a sudden they'll begin to inherit things because they'll begin to put the principles in action. So those are just some little things when we get there. So I'm going to put up the sheet because we're not teaching with, you know, we did mention the devil, but we're not talking about the devil in the temptation. We're talking about the red. So we've been going to the red. So if you guys can put up my sheet here, we'll just kind of remind everybody. Uh, Sorry, not, that's not it. Uh, I think that's it. I got to get to a better angle here. Yes, that's it. Very nicely done. Whoever did that is very pretty colors. So these are what we've been covering so far. Here's what Jesus said. These are his words, because we're saying Jesus was truth. Say Jesus was truth. He is the truth, right? And we're saying Jesus was the word. 
and then when Jesus was Jesus. So whenever we see these things, it's the truth speaking, it's the word speaking, and it's Jesus speaking and various other things. So the first thing he said about water baptism is, he says, it is proper to fulfill all righteousness. So Jesus tells us water baptism fulfills righteousness. We're leaving that because that was our first lesson. Then we're going to temptations and the temptations repeated themselves. Jesus didn't use his words, even though he was the son of God, he used the word and he said, it is written, say it is written. Probably, lack, other than lack of knowledge, probably Christians not going to the Bible is why they don't get their prayers answered. Because see, your prayer is actually a spiritual arrangement with God. Certain things he's promised you, you have to take the promise and you have to receive the promise and you have to want the promise. And so um, Jesus had studied the word from the, well, right from when he was five years old, at least, um, right up to, of course, 30 when he began his ministry. And think of it, Jesus did not use his words. So if Jesus didn't use his words, you and I would be really smart not to use your words. And if you listen to a lot of times when people pray, they're praying their heart, their desires, and says, saying, what? Either I've got to change my prayer to line up with the Bible, or what does the Bible say about my situation? So if I'm believing for healing, I just need to find two or three verses where Jesus says, by my stripes, you are healed. And then I say, now, Lord, how, teach me how to pull that and receive it because just because you read it doesn't mean you have faith for it. So you read it and read it and meditate and think. That's why I said just before Billy's mom passed away, you know, she saw her mom come into the room. And she said to Billy, I think I said this this morning, ma'am's here. Say hi to ma'am. Of course, ma'am was in the spirit realm. And then almost immediately, his mom died. But just before she died, she completely turned it around and left him with a word. But the word was left so that he doesn't understand what it means. Do you know why God does that? So you seek him. And he left, it's like your mother left you with a mystery. And yet you kind of know what the Lord's saying, but you don't know. That's what all those parables are about. And I thought, what a neat gift to have your mother checking out. And just before she checks out, it says, by the way, here's what God says, and then leaves you. All right? So we have, it is written, man needs food and word to live. And Jesus was referring to himself. I still need food. I'm on the planet, but I also need the word to live. And then it goes on, it is also written. So it was written, and then it's also written, do not test God. This is where Christians make a mistake all the time. Then they get mad at God because they told God what to do and uh, God just didn't do it the way they thought he would do it and then they're mad at him. Do not test God. He is the Lord. And if he's the Lord, he's the boss. We need to ask the boss for directions and help. But that's part of growing. That's okay. And then the third thing, he says, get lost, Satan. Say, get lost, Satan. I don't think he'd, me, he'd leave on that. Get lost, Satan. Come on, say it. Get lost, Satan. Now, if you make his, if you have worship and praise God enough, uh, he really won't come bug you too often because he hates worship and praise. Um, how do we know that? Well, that was the third temptation and it wasn't about singing. He said, worship is connected to heart and is connected to service. And so he said, Satan, get out of here. Get away from me. It is written, third time he uses it, Worship God as Lord. There's the secret. This is the danger we've been talking about. The danger of Christians with the Bible is they read a verse and they don't read a chapter or they don't read half the verses around it. So many verses people are claiming, but they don't realize there's a condition. And often the condition is the Lord. You got the Lord. It's got to be the Lord. And it's surrender. That's why some people resisted the word movement, which I love but they resisted it because there became a developed an arrogance within it that I'm going to demand God and he's just going to, I'm going to say this and God's going to do that and I'm going to, 
But see, these people were raised in godly homes where they looked at him as the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you both is true. If God gives you his word, he wants you to use it. Amen. At the same time, Jesus is saying it's very important here, your attitude, and here's one of the keys of all attitude is if we serve. And if you'll keep serving, I love our Sunday school teachers, serve anywhere, serve anywhere, do anything for people. Father, as we gather tonight in Jesus' name, we want more. And Lord, we maybe have been around for a while and heard the scriptures over and over again, but your word is fresh. Uh, Last week's bread, yesterday's bread was good, but fresh cooked bread is the best. And so Lord, we want your word fresh to us. Today we're going in to um, carrying on. I'm gonna just read a, a, a slightly leaving the red, but I'm gonna read these three or four verses just as an insight to um, Jesus. Matthew chapter 4, 13 to 16. You can just listen to me reading. It's okay. So here's what Jesus did. After leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast in the borders at Zebulon and Nephthalim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. So Jesus went somewhere because he read his Bible And his Bible told told him he was supposed to go there. Yes, I believe the Holy Spirit was leading him, but he'd read his Bible. And how do I know this? Because it says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Elijah, the prophet saying, the land of Zebulon and the land of Nephthalim uh, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. So we're not teaching this tonight. I'm just telling you, isn't it interesting that Jesus knew the word and he knew that this was an area he was supposed to go to So if you'll read the word, you'll know certain things you're supposed to do. You don't need the spirit to lead you because the Holy Spirit has given you the word. And if you read the Bible, say, well, I'm supposed to give to the poor. I don't need a word to give to the poor. I'm supposed to do this. I don't need a word to do that. I just need to do it. And see, Jesus just did it because he knew he was supposed to do it. So now we carry on with the red. Um. Matthew chapter four, verse 17. So again, we're calling him the truth. Jesus, we could call him the life too, but I don't wanna go on saying the life says and truth says and the way he says and the word says and Jesus says. So I picked truth, word, and Jesus, which are all one. So the truth says this, then the word says this, and Jesus says this. Here's what it says in verse 17. I better just read it. Make sure I have it right in my, because uh, we're just going to the red. It says, rethink. Here it says, repent, which means rethink. Repent, change directions, adjust, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Can you give me that in the NIV version, or is it already up there in the NIV Okay, good. So from that time on, Jesus began. Could you say the word with me, began? So from that time on, Jesus began to preach, okay, repent for the kingdom of God, for the, sorry, the kingdom of heaven has come near. So it says he began to preach, and there's another place where it says he began to preach and say, He began to preach and say. So what a prophet does, a prophet says his message. This is what people don't understand. Lots of times you say a message knowing people won't understand, but later they will understand, especially if they're a prophet. And if you're speaking as a prophet, often you don't know what you're saying either. But there's so much power. That's why Sunday nights I like because I get to say certain things that the Lord tells me I have to say and I don't quite know what he means. So I get to work it into a service because I know I've got to say it 
and then it becomes a witness later when it comes to pass. So different things I'll say to somebody and then I can go back to them and say, do you remember when I said that to you? And they said, yes. So Pastor Billy, I was shared with the staff, was telling me this cute story. Now he was nine years of age. He doesn't remember it, but his grandpa told him and his grandma kept reminding him and his mom would remind him. It was just after he had a miracle. He was nine, dying. I'm for people that don't know his story, he had a week to live. His, his grandmother took him out of the hospital, took him to a Catherine Kuhlman meeting. She called him from the balcony. As the power of God came on him, I think they said eight or 10 rows went under the power. And then Catherine Kuhlman herself kept drawing him for many years, would draw him in to get him ready to go into the ministry. Meanwhile, he was being rebellious. So he walked out on Catherine and, and she grabbed his coat and he just kept walking. That's why it's only recently he started talking about her. There's others that don't know her, talk about him or her all the time. He knew her, he didn't talk about her because I think, you know, he wishes now he turned around and come in. But guess what? Her prayers worked. He went out the door, her prayers worked. But he was, we were talking, reminiscing since, you know, you think when someone dies, you're thinking about things. And you don't have to believe this, but... His grandma told him, so don't mess up with ma'am. So they would go fishing, he and his grandfather all the time. They'd go fishing at this fishing place. And one day they're coming back and the lady comes out and says, you're not allowed to come here on this land anymore. And the grandfather said, well, we've uh, always done this. This is where we've always come and fish. And uh, well, you can't do it anymore, she said. And Billy went to say something to his grandpa. Well, why is she doing that? And he said, Billy, be quiet nine-year-old, be quiet. And, um, and so I'm talking about now as a prophet, okay, about saying you can say things you don't understand. He doesn't remember saying this. He doesn't understand it. I don't understand it. But sometimes things are said to make a point. And so she said, well, this is the last you're doing. All of a sudden, as a nine-year-old, he said, ma'am, there'll be no more fish in your river. She said, what'd you say? Man, and of course, the grandfather has to be shocked. He's not telling us to shut up. He's shocked. Nine years old. She, Billy said to me, I don't, was this the leftover anointing from just having his miracle a few weeks before? Was the Holy Spirit still on him? Because about a month or two later, she came and said, when's that little boy coming back? We haven't been able to catch a fish since he left. Now, see, I guarantee you, they had repented. No one understood, including Billy. He doesn't remember that story necessarily. He kind of vaguely does, but his grandpa was kind of proud. <laughs> you understand? Grandpa kept reminding him about that story because I bet you grandpa felt pretty good that, that these people who blocked them, why? Well, that was a sign to make those people wonder what's going on. Right, And so God sometimes uses a prophet to confront things, to, to do different things. And Jesus was all the ministry gifts. And, uh, and so here's, uh, he says, he began to preach and to say, and then what did he preach and say? He said, repent. Okay, let's, let's find it here. Um, repent or change your thinking. Repent means change your mind. Doesn't mean ball and squall. Although sometimes when we ball and squall, we know we were so messed up. See, if you're a little just doing your own thing and you change your thinking, there's not a major change in your direction. But if you know what you did was really, really wrong and now you realize you were hindering people, see, the, the weeping doesn't get God's attention, but it cleanses you because you've got to say, wow, look what I did. How many people, like think of Paul, think of Saul. All of a sudden, all the times when he put people in jail, women in jail, husbands in jail, all the times when, when he stood there and saw Stephen killed and he stood and he was in agreement. And now he's realizing, look what I did. I destroyed families. Well, see, that kind of change of thinking, you would want a bit of, heart repentance. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. But the main thing, God doesn't want you balling and squalling. He wants you to think different. Say, think different. 
And uh, so as we do that, I'm just going to go back and remind you, we've been teaching a side teaching at the same time, talking about the dangers of various version, virgin, versions of the Bible. So I don't mind whatever version you read to get enjoyment, but you need to have other versions, if I'm saying that word right, to get the accuracy. So some are transliterations, some like the message, which is a good book for someone new to get an overview. I would not stand on the message to get my prayer answered. That's why I'm not even saying the Amplified. What the Amplified is it takes one section and gives you about three angles to give you... So, and I'm not even saying King James, I'm saying a translation because now we've moved into a time when we got the woman's Bible and the men's Bible and this Bible and that Bible that are all written to make you enjoy them. Can I tell you, you don't want to enjoy the Bible. You want the Bible to talk to you. You want, you want God to show you where you're wrong. A lot of people think they want God to back up that they're right. No, you know, if you're right, you're already getting all the blessings for being right. I want to be adjusted. You know, when, I mean, I've prayed for people to get freed from spirits. I used to say to people, because some people in the early days think spirits are everything. And I said, would to God, every one of my problems was a spirit. I could just walk up and say, I got a stinking attitude. Stinking attitude, come out in the name of Jesus. But if I was to cast out the spirit that's causing me the most trouble, his name is Brian. Hello? And so I'd have to cast me out because it's me that's causing me more problems because I have my thinking. And so when you read the Bible, you want to read the Bible to look at something that you disagree with. So if somebody hears, I don't believe in healing. Well, I want them to go home and read the Bible and prove that healing isn't real. And if they can prove it enough that they feel peace in it, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if they can take, see, I've done all these. I don't just teach Holy Ghost or the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I went to a church that believed in it. I went home and studied every section in the New Testament. I read where Paul said, I speak in tongues more. I cannot still to this day understand why 90 some percent of the church says it's passed away. Has the Holy Ghost passed away? Has the need for prayer passed away? Are we doing so great with the way we're doing it? Now, I'm not saying everybody has to speak in tongues, but I do say everybody needs to be filled with the Spirit. And so here we have, you want the Word. So I went and studied that. Or, oh, can I lose my salvation? So I had dear friends who believed you could lose your salvation fairly easily. I had other friends that believed no matter what you could do. Well, both can't be right, and I can't tell you perfectly. I can tell you, though, now where I live, and I live by getting all these scriptures, and I realize both sides had scriptures. So what I had to do was work through those scriptures. And see, that's what you want to do. You want the word to challenge what you believe in. Well, I just believe this. Well, why do you believe it? Because my church says this. Your church ain't going in front of Jesus with you. Okay, but if you can go to the Bible, so you want the word, that's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. It means if somebody comes and says something that cuts you a little bit, see, if you're iron, it doesn't hurt you. It takes a little bit off the edge and whatever you're learning from that person, you'll become sharper. And that's the whole point. So we don't want to just read Bibles that we like. And then we just don't want my theology. I don't want my theology from the church. Like, I would love for you to differ as long as we don't get mad at each other. But you have your scriptures because, see, now I know you're going to the word. See, and Jesus is saying, guys, because this is, you know, he just beat up on the devil. And he's telling everybody wherever he goes, he's going to this place of darkness. He's saying, guys, change you're thinking, every one of us says, well, we got to get born again. That's only the start. That's only the gift that gets you into the kingdom. You got to change your thinking in order to grow in the kingdom. So where you think everything is yours, now you realize everything's God. And if everything's God, see, people think 10% is God. No, no, I hate to tell you this. My book says everything's his. 
My Bible says he's the Lord of your life. My Bible says that I dedicate it. Now, you be thankful that he has access. He want you to give him access to everything, but he's only training you on 10%. So, and that's why you've got to read the Bible, because if you just listen to a preacher that says that, you might say, well, I don't want to do it just because our preacher said it, but you read the Bible, then you and the Bible are going to have to wrestle. And that's what you want. You want the word to make you rethink so you don't want to stay the same. You don't want to be, I don't want to be the same believer next year that I am this year. I like being around people that preach things. I say, I don't agree with that. Because then I got approved. So I had a pastor, and he was, his dad was an alcoholic. He was totally against alcohol. I'm against alcohol for what it's done. I see what it's done. But I used to go to him. I said, I can't tell people they can't drink because the Bible doesn't say they can't drink. And he said this to me, and I understand, because his dad was an alcoholic. He saw the destruction that it brought into his home. And he said this, and God never said to me to say anything to him. And God never spoke to me about what he told me for maybe months later. And he turned, turned to me. He said, should I lower my standard to the Bible? And I didn't to talk to him anymore because I wasn't there to wrestle with him. I'm here there to ask the pastor a question. And months later, months later, I didn't know the Lord was going to do this, but months later, I just heard the Holy Spirit say, oh, and it was so relaxed. It was just like how God sometimes speaks, just so relaxed. He says, oh, 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 can you lower your standards to the Bible? Are your standards above the Bible's? Can your standards be above the Bible's? And all of a sudden, I didn't have to study much on that one. The Bible is the standard. Now, the Bible also warns you in the Old Testament, there's an old serpent in that bottle. And as a smart pastor, I'll, I warn my kids, there's a serpent in that bottle, but I can't tell them they can't drink. And by the way, my good friend, the professor, would always explain it was actually healthier for you to drink alcohol in the old days because they didn't purify their water. So you're, it's either dirty water with little buggies in, you know, or it's, it's drink a little, a little bit, say a little bit of alcohol since every drinker knows what Timothy said or what Paul said to Timothy, drink a little bit of alcoholic, uh, alcohol for your stomach. So here's my recommendation. Stay away from alcohol unless you got worms. <laughs> and then you can have, have a couple of drinks to get rid of those worms. But see, people say, oh, you shouldn't teach that, Pastor. No, I'm, just got, I'm stuck with the Bible, my friends. I'm stuck with this Bible. And you can say, Pastor, you're not fulfilling everything. I'll say, you're right, because it's a pretty big book and I'm working on it. And so here's what Jesus said. He said, preach, I'm gonna preach and say, and here's what I'm gonna preach, and here's what I'm gonna say, and here's what I'm gonna preach, and here's what I'm gonna say, and this is before he picks up the boys. He's speaking to these people that he's going to. I'm gonna preach and I'm gonna say, change your thinking. Turn, return. Repent means turn, Return, change your mind, your thinking, change your direction, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In other words, it's so close. If we change our thinking, we're gonna be able to connect to it. Because that's all Jesus did. All the time he was here, he just kept connecting to the kingdom of God. He'd take God's words, speak them to people, and then he'd transfer the anointing to the people. Because later when they said, Jesus, you said these things, he said, no, no, it's my father. So what was he doing? He'd studied the Bible. Say, studied the Bible. The Bible says if you study the Bible, you'll begin to show yourself approved. Just like, I believe it's an electric, no, no, it's gas. You blow up things if you don't do things right, right? It's gas and, and, and uh, all of that, furnaces and, and all sorts of things. So he's very good at what he does, they tell me, Okay. Who wants somebody very good at what they do hooking up your furnace? Who wants somebody very good? Who wants Pastor Brian to come over and hook up your natural gas furnace for you? Okay, now the only reason he's good, now maybe he was good, but I don't think he did it at five. I think he went to school somewhere and he began to study to show himself approved 
and he got this little certificate that says he can charge big amounts of money because that's why you go to school. Because I will give them a discount deal on fixing their furnace anytime they want. But you are smart if you don't get my discount. Go for his full price deal. You see what I'm saying? Because then you get to keep your house. Say, I get to keep my house. Okay, so we're just now, we're gonna leave that there for now. So go, we're going through the red, thinking what Jesus is trying to tell us, change your thinking. And then the next thing he goes and finds himself some fishermen, and here's what he tells them. I'll teach you how to fish, but you don't know how to fish because the way you fish for fish is different but I'll teach you how to fish, but you're gonna to have to change your thinking. And that, when we go into that next week, you'll find that's exactly what he didn't say. Oh, you guys are fishermen. Oh, you already understand. He said, no, 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 you come. I'll teach you what you need to do to fish.